here to get all the spider webs out of the way. Welcome back to Tassie Bushcraft. I'm heading to my what will be my bushcraft base camp where I plan to build a shelter of some description. But um I'm a long way from it at the moment the days are short it's only about five o'clock in the evening it's already pitch black it's just off a few days after winter solstice so i'm heading up here by torchlight which is easier said than done i'm not sure how much you can see i've had to pump the iso on the camera right up and put my torch on a high beam to try and get video working which I'm not going to do for too long because it'll burn my torch battery up and I need it but I just thought I'd turn the camera on for a moment now so you can see how I got in here it's just going to take a good 45 minutes to get to my destination I could camp just up here actually in about five minutes walk away where I did my last camp last overnight video but um I've now cut my track all the way to the top where I want to build my proper camp so it's tempting to try and push right up there tonight but it's a bit hard to find, especially in the dark, because um, there's probably 30, 40 metres at the end where it's just track tape. It'll be hard to find in the dark, it's a very thick bush. Uh, I've camped here before by this big rock. Set up a touchy right here once. See if I can find a photo of that. Put it up there for you. I have my fire right here. It's probably when I first discovered this place. You can still see my ring of stones there. Um, right. Now I've got to make my decision. Push to the top. Or camp at the last place. It's going to be pitch black here or pitch black at the top getting firewood originally I was thinking well we'll have a bit of light left by the time I get here but that doesn't hasn't happened so almost to the top it is so um put some new cameras which are going to make filming this kind of thing a bit easier um got a DJ Osmo action camera which is what you're watching right now because um it just makes it so much easier having it strapped to you and just leave it running got my hands free and to tell you the truth i go out bush a lot and i just don't bother filming because it just slows you down too much but i really want to take you guys along with me so i saw these on special the other day and thought i'm gonna get one and um hopefully that'll mean more video content anyway I might um turn the camera off now so I can put my torch back onto low beam and make it go the distance and I'll see you a bit further on like impenetrable bush impenetrable bush that's what I'd be trying to walk through if I hadn't cut a track like that's um cutting grass this stuff's got a serrated edge that slices you up. So if you're going to be building a shelter or hut or something, 
you don't want to be trying to pull materials through that stuff. This is a very steep, long track. All right, it's a good 20 minutes since I last had the camera filming, since the last bit you saw. Um, I'm coming to the end of my track where it's going to flatten out. Thank God, because this has been a, a prick of a climb with this pack full of stuff. Last little bit of track and then the bush bashing. And I've got track tape here marking the last 50 metres. There's the first bit there. But, um, it's going to be a challenge to dump my walking stick now that we're flattening out. Use both hands to pull myself through the bush. Right. Can't see any track tape at all. I do have the spot marked on my GPS app on my phone. So if worse comes to worse, I can um just bush bash following that. This bush is thick. Oh, there's another bit of tape. Not sure if you can see that. That's a good sign. Constantly looking around for more track tape. I have a feeling I'm not going to find any more. There's a bit. Still on track. That's good. Uh, pack stuck between trees. Uh. Another bit of tape. Let me know in the comments what you think of this um, track footage like in terms of just watching me walking along trying to find my way through this scrub or just walking off, off that track in general um, is it boring or is it um, do you enjoy coming along for this part of the adventure Be getting close to my camp now. Well, I found it. This is the spot. Might not look like much in the dark, but um, it's a clearing. Surrounded by um, lots of stone, which I can build a good fireplace with. But obviously tonight I won't be doing anything fancy, just setting up my tent and um, making a nice campfire to cook on. Got some salmon that a friend gave me, so I'll put that on the grill. It's a tarp for like a semi-permanent type shelter. Lean to, which I'll establish up here first. The layers that I took off on the way up. 
because it's probably like hovering on zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit right now. But um, I am cooking after walking up that hill. All right. I set up camp. Just um, collecting stones to make a little fire ring. Alright, still gotta find firewood. Just found a dead standing tree about 20 meters from camp, which is awesome because um not only is it a, a short way to drag it back, but as the, it's completely trackless around here at the moment, you only need to you don't need to wander much further than that and then not be able to find the camp again in this thick scrub. So um this is really lucky. Beautiful bit of salmon. All right. We reckon skin side first. Um, am I in view? Can't quite tell if you can see me or not. G'day. <laughs> Finally, got the salmon cooked. shooting my face because the only reason you can see me is that torch is shining straight on me. Mmm, the salmon is good. Delicious. And cooking it on that grill is such a good way of cooking something messy like this because no washing up. Like I'll just chuck the grill back on the fire for a few minutes and all that crap will burn off it. Let it cool down, it can go back in the pack. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I won't a bit of bone. Won't um feel much more tonight. Apparently cold, but I don't feel it at all. This fire is pretty toasty. 
it's like about zero degrees. Um, well, it's one degree in the town, closest town, which is quite a bit lower in altitude. And so it must be a lot colder up here. We've got a cranking fire and I've been keeping warm, collecting firewood, walking up that bloody great hill. So I'm um, looking forward to getting this down the gullet, having a cuppa and um, hitting the sack and um, get, getting stuck into this place in the morning. Well, it's morning, and I slept in quite a bit. Um, the wind's picked up since the sun came up. It's a bit windy today, um, so it's probably going to be quite a bit colder. Just trying to cozy in here, but just trying to motivate myself to get up, rug up, and get out there and get stuck into it. Probably um, cook some... Put a billy of tea on and um, start working on the last bit of the track, I reckon. Of course, I want to try and get a um, some kind of basic lean-to up the day, just so next time that I come here, there's shelter ready to go, um, somewhere to hang out under in the rain.
it's nice to find out how sheltered this little spot is when you can tell that it's it's windy out there in the um, canopy so right here like a little bit of wind is getting through but not too much you know the fire wasn't out of control um, that's good to know because you can get some horrendous winds where I am um, so it's good to know there's a bit of shelter And one good thing about this spot is that um, there's no particularly tall trees around here, so no widow makers. Like if I go maybe 50 metres away, start to get to bigger trees, but right here there's nothing really higher than about 15 metres. Um, and so there's nothing I'm worried about in terms of branches falling on me. I've had some scary nights camped in the bush, in the tent, and looking at the, um, the silhouette of the trees swaying in the moonlight on the um, tent fly, thinking one's going to break and fall any minute. Um, and in fact, one night I was camped in the Tarkine with a friend of mine, a bunch of us actually, and um, I mean, we didn't have much choice where we camped. It was just huge myrtle forest everywhere. And this massive tree came down in the night. Um, we all thought that everyone else was sleeping through it, but we, we found out in the morning we were all just lying there, terrified. <laughs> and we spoke to each other. And hearing these giant trees, you know, some of these are like six meters at the base, um, cracking and falling in this horrendous windstorm. And then one of them came cracked really close to us and it shook the ground it felt the, like the ground shake in the tent and in the morning we unzipped the tent and it was literally 10 meters from us and I mean this thing was at least a meter and a half thick like it would have completely taken us out it just by chance didn't happen to fall on us <laughs> I mean, a few meters to the left so um yeah it certainly made me very aware of uh, where i camp and certainly if i'm going to do a lot of camping in the one spot like here set up a permanent semi-permanent camp then um to really make sure it's um, a safe safe place i've decided to um pack up camp now because there is a chance of a shower this afternoon so I don't want to be packing everything away wet so I thought I might as well just um, get this out of the way now all right so this is this is my um, bushcraft belt if you will um, yeah, just to show you the tools I'm using today Got my trusty World War II machete, Bucko Laplander, which is a folding saw. Anyone who watches um, bushcraft channels on YouTube will be familiar with these. Uh, fairly fine teeth, uh, and that's good for cutting green stuff. So I use that a lot for track work. And then for bigger stuff, I've got my um, Silky Big Boy. Fantastic saw, that's wider tooth, better for uh, dry timber. Yeah, but it will cut through green timber easily as well. <laughs> um, and that's yeah, good for big stuff. And I'll just get stuck into it.
this is um, really thick stuff that um, came through last night. We used the old uh, Laplander saw on most of this. The machete's more useful in the spindly stuff like that. When I get to a long section of um, sticky stuff, <laughs> um, that's where I pull out the Laplander. One day I'll probably upgrade it with a silky gumboy, but um, one day. That's a slightly better saw, apparently. And the silky big boy, which I have up there, that's um, if anything to go by it, that's a good sign. I've done the preliminary track. It'll make it much easier to find the way here in the dark and take collect materials and take them in. Actually, just down here is a pole I cut. Might come in handy. I'm now close enough to camp that um, things I cut on the track. Some of them that are good enough can be reused in construction, maybe. So I'll start making a little pile. Be warming up a bit, stripping off the layers. Just found some, um, the last purple cheese berry of the season I reckon. Uh, about two months ago the bush was full of these and all kinds of other berries. Uh, so yeah this is Cyathodes glauca, more commonly known as the purple cheese berry. It's edible, it's um, very pithy. Uh, this one's a bit past it. You know it'll get you by in a pinch but it's not exactly um, pleasant. Very. Doesn't really taste like anything. Kind of chalky with a hard seed in the middle. A lot of um, Tasmanian berries are like that. There are some really juicy ones though. And hopefully by spring, well most of them come out like mid, mid-summer. Um, to late summer. Hopefully by then I'll be able to show you some um, some of the best ones. Alright, I'm just having a look at the um, overall area. Thinking if I build a hut, where's the best ground for that? There's a couple of big trees here. Not, not very tall, but just um, fat at the bottom. I don't want to be removing that. Um, same kind of thing here, don't want to be touching that tree. All out here though is um, very open and reasonably flat. I'll need to build it up a bit at the bottom end down there, a tiny bit, just to level it out, but that won't be um, hard. Right here there's huge piles of stone um, everywhere, so no shortage of building materials. I would at least build the, um, the uh, fireplace out of stone. I'm thinking that'll be around here, um, so I'll move that um, back to here and that'll be like a, a upright type fireplace I reckon and build the hut around that um, hmm so just thinking where to put the lean-to which is a, a very temporary shelter thinking I might clear this area back a bit and um, maybe use that tree there there's one side of it. Um, I reckon that'll work well. The ground's fairly flat under there and there's no stone. I don't want to be here because obviously I want to be constructing something more permanent here. 
Um, so maybe this fireplace can stay for a while because that'll be out the front of the lean-to that's right here. Um, and then that can stay here until I've built that one. And yeah, I think that's, I think that's what I'll do. It just means now I have to get to work on um, clearing that area there out and um, sticking up that tarp. I don't even really, can't even remember how big that tarp is. Let's have a look. Um, right, eight by ten foot. Okay. Have to keep that in mind. Reasonable size. All right, we'll get to it. So this is the, um, the tarp. I bought this right at the end of um, US Amazon being available in Australia. So um, for those of you outside Australia, um, we can't buy things off US Amazon anymore, which is a real shame. Uh, basically our government said they wanted to stick a 10% import duty on everything. And uh, Amazon International said, well, that's just too difficult to implement into our website so um, they cut us off and we can only buy from the Australian Amazon store which means we miss out on a lot of the awesome stuff that um, bushcrafters in the US are getting their hands on but um, we had a date I think it was the 31st of July one or two years ago and um, on that before that happened, I was like, right, well, I better get some stuff off there before while I can. And one of the things was that tarp, and the other thing was my um, canteen, titanium canteen, which I got a lot cheaper than had I got it from within Australia. Obviously, this is this will be the underside. I'm just um, laying it out to get an idea of size. That's um, pretty perfect actually. I'm just thinking that fits nicely along there. I want the long side coming back this way. Um, I'm just going to make this up as I go along really. It's certainly not a this is how you do it video. It's a um, watch me make this shit up as I, as I go along and uh, join me for the adventure. So now I've got to find some kind of tree. Obviously 
this won't be it, but something to go along like that and something, some way of securing it on this side into the ground. So I'm just going for a bit of a wander now. See what kind of poles I can harvest. And it would be nice not having to cut something down, but the problem is nearly everything that's lying down here is rotten. So. Dense wood. Pretty good. Something like that. I made a mark up on the tree there. At the height I want it. So we've got to have plenty of overlap at each end for lashing. About a foot and a half there. About a foot there, that'll do. So we'll just cut this top bit off. It always looks so quick and easy when you watch people build these things on YouTube. But even the most simplest one it takes a bit of work. Um, and I'm already thinking about if I'll even get this one finished tonight because, or today, because tonight is not far away. Um, I didn't sleep that well last night and I um, didn't get up to about 10 because I slept in to compensate. And now it's nearly already past three o'clock in the afternoon. So in an hour and a half it'll be dark again and I've got to get out of here. But um, I'll keep going for a little while. It'd be good to at least get this um, thing up. All right. Obviously that's way too long. I only need the top bit, which means I can use the bottom bit for something else. If it's sturdy enough, that's what I have to work out. I might bury the bottom end in the ground. I mean I can either create a, a tripod with some other poles or bury this in the ground. It really depends on how tough the ground is to dig, so I might find that out now. It's stuck out there for now. Yes. 
So, oh, about 10 inches down. See if I get past the rock, or get any little rocks out of the way, then I might be able to sharpen the end of the stake, hammer it down even further. Thing is, I've got to know how to get this back out again. The idea is just to loosen the ground up. Or I might just give up completely if it's too tough. It's going in. Okay, let's loosen that up. A bit further. Oh, stone's breaking up. Thought that would happen. Little shake. How much have I gained? Oh, that's pretty good. That's good. We've got the length we want now. Just want little stones to start with. Dirt. Just enough, to, enough to cover that first layer of stone. And I might pack it in at the end of this.
better. Just gonna find the way that that fits the most snugly. Maybe this side. Yep, that's better. Perfect. There's my mark, and it's nice and straight. All right, it's starting to get dark, so I've decided just to pack up the camp. Um, the the action cam battery is nearly out anyway, so it's kind of the end of filming, and I want to get out of here before it gets dark. So I'm just going to pack up and um, head back down the hill. <laughs> 